This is the 2023 Brewtubers Online Brewers Club Yeast Experiment, British Brown Ale. Thanks to our sponsors, Imperial Yeast, Five Star Chemicals, Yakima Valley Hops, Beer and Wine Hobby Homebrew Store, and Brewers Hardware. Let's get tasting. What's up, guys? Chris back from Burgos Brewing with review number seven in the Brewtubers 2023 Yeast Experiment British Brown Ale. With this one, what we got for you right here is Brookside Brews. This is our man Sean over here. Fun fact, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it when I did Gam Duds with, with Billy. He does some commercial brewing, and Sean as well is one of the you know, uh, new to commercial brewing. Just got um, kind of taken on part-time at First Line Brewing up in Buffalo. So congrats on that. Really cool. Um, this would be my first Brookside brew beer. Um, unfortunately, last year when we did the Phantasm experiment, his cans got uh, oxidized. Uh, so he didn't want to subject us to that. So he pulled all his cans out of, out of that um, experiment. So uh, really excited to try this. Uh, heard a lot of good things about from the other guys in the club that have had Sean's beers. And I mean, he's... He's got a part-time gig as a commercial brewer, so, I mean, it's got to be decent, right? Um, so, let's crack this baby open and, and get going. And again, like I've said before, I'm the only one in this experiment that doesn't can, so another nice, nice can here. Nice label, you can see a nice little logo there. Um, and for Sean's submission, he used WLP005, which is British Ale. Poured a little more vigorous to end there, didn't give it too much at the beginning, but they yeah, got a nice, nice head there. Ooh, it's coming all across. This uh, might compete with the last one I did with Kurtz. I think the last one, as far as the head goes, it's the darkest. This is like a tan, 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 like not even off white or anything. This is like a nice tan head, a little darker. Um, Color in the glass looks about the same, maybe a, a smidge darker than, than some of the other ones, kind of like Kurtz. Um, still got some of those rich red dark mahogany notes in it, but maybe definitely a little more a little more brown. Um, I mean, it's a brown ale than, than some of the other ones. Um, head dissipated pretty quickly. I mean, it didn't pour too vigorously. I still left a little bit in the bottom. There's some dregs. Um, so yeah, head didn't stick around a while, but... Again, 5.6% beer, so not not light, not heavy. I mean, I know on, on my own, the head didn't stick around that long, and I think, I don't know, I don't think, you know, uh, British beers are known for their head sticking around all that long. Somebody could correct me if I'm wrong, blast me in the comments if you need to. Um, don't have an OG or FG on this guy, so can't tell you what that is, but... Without further ado, let's get into actually reviewing the beer. Ooh. So right off the bat on the nose, I'm definitely getting... Um, definitely smells English, like a typical English ester you'd, you'd get to it, but... Yeah, I have to shook it up a little bit more too. So definitely got that, you know, traditional um, English... I mean, this is a British ale, but, you know, typical of a... British English style beer, some sort of, you know, dark stone fruit, plummy, raisin, something coming through, uh, maybe a little bit of kind of toffee-like uh, sweetness coming through too. I know you can't smell sweetness, but a little bit of toffee and like a slight touch of like a slight whisper of like a, a roastiness coming through. It's really, really nicely like complex, but also balanced aroma, if that makes sense. Um, it's not specifically one note. You can pick them all out, but they all just kind of meld together to just give this general sense of an English uh, English beer. So. Mm. First impression, you heard the noise. Uh, really, really good. Um, I just kind of got blown away by how good that first sip was, so I didn't <laughs> get a whole lot of notes. Let me go back in there and get the second sip. I 
Uh, this is so well balanced, but also complex. I think you get a nice, I'm really picking up um, the, that floor malted uh, Maris Otter that we used here. Definitely getting a little more uh, just, you know, straight up base malt notes on this than some of the other ones. It's a really nice kind of like, like a, not, not like a, like a bread crust, like a, a nice like bread crust in there. Not overwhelming, just, just a nice, nice backbone of it. Picking up a little more roast in the aroma now, it's getting warmer. Um, the well, first thing, yeah, blown, blown, kind of blown away by that. Yeah, that base malt character um, coming through there. And then kind of right after that base malt, I'm getting a nice um, caramelly again. Caramel, toffee, something. The dark, darker burnt sugar type, type thing on there. And then just kind of... And that, to me, that flavor... Um, kind of melds really like my palate the way I pick it up is is that toffee flavor and those like plummy uh raisiny they kind of together for me mix and they kind of make just one just what I characterize just like English English flavor um but I can pick that up a little bit it's more toffee on on the taste backed by by a little bit of that like dark fruit um character and then the whatever subtle roast I pick it in the aroma. I'm not getting in, in flavor. Definitely not getting really any any of the, the baker's chocolate or kind of like a chocolate character that I got in a couple of the other ones. Maybe like a hint really at, at, in the background at the very, very end, but not not a whole lot. You really have to kind of search for it. Um, then, you know body on this and it's like a medium it starts off it coats your mouth really nicely it's like a nice medium medium the medium full body but then it finishes really dry and kind of washes right off the palate wants you to go back in for another sip which it's really nicely balanced with this because there is a lot of you know um it's not a heavy beer by any means um but the those darker malt the toffee the the fruity esters, those kind of flavors, um, hit you really up front with that big mouth feel. And then if it finished, if it finished full too and sweet, um, I like it cloying. But this finishes nice and dry and invites you right back in to get more of that kind of sweetness, that caramel on your palate. And washes off and, and invites you right back in for another sip. Um, so yeah, that's that's really really nice. Like I I've said. Uh, carb on this bad boy for as much as the head dissipated and it's really just let's look at that nice little like fine layer sitting there so it's not under carb by and not under carb by any means i think it's actually perfect for this style um yeah i think it's right on point um I, yeah like i said for style i think it's it's there i think you know uh we're typically used to at least, you know, home brewers, and if you're brewing a lot of American styles like IPAs or even lager, you're used to a heavier carb on it. But like I said, it doesn't not bothering me any, and I think it goes with the style very, very well. And bitterness, I'm not picking up any bitterness on this one, similar to the other ones. It's nicely balanced, just like probably just a, a hint of it in there, and maybe whatever bitterness is there is helping lend to that drier finish. Kind of wash your palate, but anything the bitterness is balanced to, to style. And I'm not picking up any hop characters that I, that I can think of. Honestly, have not used um, EKG Fuggle or Challenger a whole lot myself, uh, and I don't drink a whole lot of English style beers. Uh, I don't know if I'd be able to pick them out of a lineup if I got them, but. Not really sensing a whole lot, uh, but yeah, that that just kind of 
dark, plummy English ester mixed with that, the, you know, the toffee burnt caramel. Really, really coming through. And like I said, whatever kind of slight roasty I picked up isn't really there anymore. Maybe like a, a faint whisper in the background. Almost think I could smell more like a like a baker's chocolate and almost kind of give me a hint of like those cherry cordial candies that you get like dark chocolate and then you get a little bit of that that fruit at the end there kind of vibe yeah definitely maybe a little more of that dark baker's chocolate on, on, on the nose now than roast but still not picking up those really darker malts in this as I did uh, you know as you'd expect, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot used. I think it was, you know, roughly two and a half percent of each, but um, you're thinking a beer about five, five point six percent with the amount of uh, darker malts that we used in here, even with the lower percentage, you'd be able to pick it up a little bit more. Um, but yeah, no, that was the only good things to say about this, Sean. Great job with this beer. Um, as far as my rankings go, um, right now. I think I ended up putting Rex number one a couple. That's Matt a, a couple beers ago. Uh, followed by Eggs at 12. Uh, then my own. Then they got Snuck Kurtz in there. Um, it's, it's getting tough now, especially having to space these out a little bit, maybe too much. Uh, I'm going to move this one right here from Sean up to number two behind Matt and Rekt. Um, there's something about this. It's just so, it's just nicely balanced. It gives me everything I'd expect in an English beer. And then I think the only thing I would, <laughs> I really want to pick up a little more of those, that chocolate, the darker characters for the brown, just a touch of it. But I think other, other than that, it's just. It's clean. The ester's there. The malt character's there. Like I said, I really, really like this one, being able to pick up the base malt. I mean, I think a big part of the recipe when Nick made it was using that floor malted Maris Otter. And in a lot of the beers, I haven't been able to pick it up. And I think this is one that I really, really have been able to pick up. Uh, to pick up. And I think that's the difference between... This in Rex, why I put them at number two. I'm looking back at my notes here now. Um, in Matt's beer, I tasted the base malt. I said bready pretzel crust type thing. This is a little bit different. It's bready, but it's like a bread crust, not like a pretzel crust. Um, but and I think that's what's separating these from me. I'm tasting base first, supported by um, the other flavors in there. So yeah, Sean, awesome job. Can't wait to try more of your beer another time, but yeah, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, stay tuned. I have one more review left, then I might do a whole recap at the end of it, but uh, until next time, guys, it's been fun. Cheers.